Hello and welcome to section 30 of the Grand Tour of Northumberland. In terms of episodes, this is the halfway mark. Today we're going to be looking at a hill fort, um, some Iron Age or Bronze Age settlements, an abandoned medieval village, hopefully a peel tower and a 19th century manor house, not sure, hopefully, uh, a standing stone and Britain's most haunted castle. So join me for section 30. So we're back at Wooler Common. And it's starting to get filled up again. Mostly with dog walkers, in fairness. So we come out the car park and we're going back along the road towards Wooler. But we won't be going as far as Wooler. We'll be turning off soon. So our first point of interest is this mound here which is known as Green Castle and it's said to be one of only 200 remaining examples of a late Anglo-Saxon early Norman bailey. The site was in use until the 12th century when the castle moved into Wooler itself. So from Green Castle we're heading up this path here along the side of the wood. That's the view looking down into Wooler as we're going up. We haven't actually come very far as you can see. There's the green castle. We're just heading up here. This is the outer wall of an Iron Age hill fort. See if that gives you some sort of scale. It's massive. So you see the ramparts on the top there. This is the outer wall. I'm not sure what this structure is. The inner wall's over there. So we have multiple walls here. So we've got this one here, which is like a second outer wall. And then we've got this one here, which is a third wall. And then we've got this final one over here, which is the fourth one. And behind it, there's another one. Five walls defending this place. And then this would have been the settlement in here. So this site is called the Kettles Hill Fort and it dates from the late Bronze Age to early Iron Age. So around about 8th to 5th century BC. It was still occupied when the Romans were here which means that it had a thousand years of occupation on this site. In later years, it was used for herding cattle, hence the name Kettle, just taking some of these views. Got a natural defense system there. And on this side as well, stunning. So in any case, we're gonna head back a little bit where we've just come, and we're heading over in that direction on the St. Cuthbert's Way through the woods. We're just coming down off the big wall and you can see there's actually another two walls there. 
So that was a really impressive hill fort and it's older than Humbleton Hill. It's one of the hill forts that breached the Bronze Age to Iron Age. The path seems to fork here. I believe it's the top path that we need to take. Yes, it's the top path. And there's the St Cuthbert's Way marker sign. So this is St Cuthbert's Way, saying warning cattle. And we're looking across towards St Cuthbert's Way. It looks like there's cows on the left, but it almost looks like there's a bull on the right. Footpath goes this way, though. This here's Earl Head. And according to the map, the path goes straight through. It's very windy. There's the view of a hedge up. Busy planting mixed woodland here, which is really nice to see. See some hawthorn, some sycamore, some scotch pine. It's an old settlement here, by the looks of it. No information about it whatsoever. So we're heading down to that bridge down there, which is the Caribbean Bridge. Kerry Bam. Very beautiful. It might be moan gorse, but it is very beautiful. This is Kerry Bam Bridge in need of a lick of paint. Built in 1956. Nice little cascade as well. Nice deep pool there actually. On the other side you can see the old fort that the bridge replaced. And we are headed in this direction to Middleton Old Town and then on to North Middleton. So two miles. This is lovely. Gorgeous. There's quite a few cheesy agates in the water. So I've spotted a few more. This down the bottom here is the Hot Hope Burn. And this is the road that you take to Langleyford with climbing the Cheviot. That road is absolutely horrendous. So when we get to here, and there's a wall going up, we need to head up that wall in order to see something quite special. The cows look pretty placid, just eating grass, minding their own business. I'm gonna head up to here. So this is what we've come to see. You can see an outer wall. That's quite a substantial wall, much bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's very windy. And in the middle, we have a roundhouse, a very clear one quite large one, really big. You can still see the stone structure that formed the base of the roundhouse. You can still see where the stones are put together. It's really amazing. 
and it looks absolutely fabulous on the air satellite pictures and look at this entranceway to the settlement and just look at that wow And then there's another one just over here, very conscious of these cows. We've got a little bit of a wall there in case I can jump over if need be. And this here's the second one. Here's another roundhouse. Really impressive. Outer walls. This one seems to have two roundhouses by the looks of it. This one looks wow. This is actually a substantial wall. And there's a second roundhouse here. Again, these places are fabulous from the air. Got a real clear roundhouse here. Clear wall. A very tall wall, actually. Well protected from the cattle. It's amazing. Wow, so I'm trying to get some sort of scale. I'm not sure I can get some scale. It is really impressive. These walls are taller than me, and this is just for like two roundhouses. This isn't a hill fort. Now, the date, let's go this way. The date of these settlements, I'm not sure. But actually, I've just found another roundhouse even better than the other ones wow look at this roundhouse here clearly see the stone walls let's step back a little bit amazing so you can get it into a picture there We've got roundhouse there Really impressive. Fantastic. The cows are starting to notice me, so I'm gonna head back. Which is a shame because over there looks like a stone row where those cows are. And it looks like there might be another settlement over there as well. But oh I'm discovering yet another roundhouse here. So this roundhouse is outside the walls. So you've got a roundhouse here as well. So as I was saying, we don't know how old these settlements are, but just the other side of this hill is a major Bronze Age settlement, which we can't date. So the chances are that these settlements here are also Bronze Age which means that those roundhouses and those walls <laughs> we're ready for it <laughs> would be let's work it out about 3000 years old so about so we're around about 800 bc 1000 bc 800 bc and they're still standing I mean, there could always be Iron Age, but as I said, because of the proximity of a major Bronze Age settlement just on the top of the hill, chances are these are Bronze Age as well. But even if there were Iron Age, what? That's another, say, two and a half thousand years. So there's only about 500 so years difference. Look at this, this wall is just amazing. I really wish you could capture it on the camera. That's like a major roundhouse there. I think that's probably the best roundhouse example we've seen so far. And we've seen some pretty amazing ones. I think the cattle are just minding their own business, but 
I still don't want to walk through it with my daughter, if you get what I mean. We're going to head down this way any case. This is actually the site of the third settlement I wanted to show you, but we're actually upsetting the cows. This here is a fresh water spring, so it's a good place to top up your water bottles. I brought extra water today, so I don't need to. Over there, guarded by those cows. There's some more cows behind it. There's a tombless. A, there's a few of them, by the looks of it. Looks like there's one there, but that's the main one. So they're prehistoric burial grounds, probably Bronze Age again. So this is the Happy Valley. It's very beautiful. A little bit windy, but very beautiful. Behind me are the remains of a medieval village called North Middleton, also known as Old Middleton. And it was once called Middleest Middleton in the 13th century. It was abandoned in the 18th century due to the Industrial Revolution and the Agricultural Revolution. Basically, they weren't needed on the land anymore, so they went to the cities looking for work. Houses. See, this is a later shepherd's house. So obviously this one's a more modern addition to the place. It looks like there's more of the original medieval village over here. Yeah, you can see the remains of the houses very clearly. This is probably the main village to be honest.
So you've got a row of houses here. You've got houses over there. You've got some more houses here. So you've got a row of houses in this field here, which is the original medieval village. And then you've got the row of houses here, which is the rest of the medieval village. Yeah, so you've got an abandoned house here. And there's probably a couple of abandoned houses among them as well. But most of it, I think, is just repurposed stone for sheepfold. I think the main village, medieval village, was over here and behind this more recent shepherd's hut. I think on this walk, avoiding cattle, it's going to be impossible. So this here is the modern North Middleton. So we're following this road around the corner to the A697 and then me and my daughter are turning around and heading back to Wooler Common. So by the power of video editing, this is where we left off last time on the busy A697 and we're going to turn left and then we're going to take a right along a track to Lilburn Farm. I don't know if you can work out the earthworks there. This place is called Castle Hill. I'm not sure if it's an Iron Age fort or not. It could be of a defensive system. And this is Lilburn Tower Farm. So this is the reason why it was important to do this hike on this day. So if you time the walk nicely, you should be here sometime between 2 and 6. It's not open all the time, but you can phone and ask for access to the gardens if it's not open. Hello, it's Emma from M's Adventure, hanging out the window. Follow me on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See who we meet? <laughs> Hello. This is the old observatory. This is Lilburn Tower. It was built in the 1800s. I'm going to head this way to see the 15th century chapel and here tower.
So this is the remains of the Peel Tower at Lilburn Tower, the structure that gives the place its name. When you get to this junction, we're turning right. We're following the sign to Newtown and Chillingham, which is in that direction. When you get to this junction, we're going to turn right. If you wanted to take a shortcut, you could just turn left to the castle. But we have a couple more things to see along here. This here is the hurlstone as the remains of a medieval cross from about the 11th, 12th century. We've already seen quite a few of these bases, but we're missing the cross. This one contains the post or the pillar of the cross. Obviously the cross bit's missing though. The hurlstone forms part of two Northumbrian legends. One we'll be discussing later on. The other one involves some treasure hunters. The story goes that two treasure hunters came here in the middle of the night, digging around the base of the cross, looking for some treasure, obviously, and the ground began to shake, and they released an evil spirit in the shape of a swan. Probably a goose, to be honest, but I hadn't seen, and it scared the life out of them. But that's how the story goes. So legend has it, the cross was placed here to protect the prison of an evil spirit. <laughs> If you believe in such things. Over there is a more recent tower which was built as a conference centre for the estate. We'll not go any closer to the tower. The main thing that we wanted to see was the stone. There you go, the hill stone. I head back across the field to the gate and then there's another standing stone just the other side of that hill which is much older. Obviously this one here is 11th, 12th century. The one behind there is prehistoric. Okay, this is the U Hill Standing Stone, which is supposed to be Neolithic in age. And it sits adjacent to where the Devil's Causeway used to be. The Devil's Causeway used to run along here, which was an old Roman road connecting what is now the A68, which used to be Deer Street, up towards Berwick Way. There's a little cross there.
Welcome to Chillingham Castle. The rhododendrons are beautiful at the moment. Pick the right time to come. The original mansion house, which isn't the one behind me, was built in the 12th century. Chillingham started life as a monastery before becoming a fortified tower and family seat for the Grey family in 1246. It didn't truly become a castle until the 14th century. In the 16th century, when Henry VIII broke ties with the Catholic Church, a resulting rebellion in the north called the Pilgrimage of Grace resulted in significant damage to the castle's towers after the Percy family of Annick Castle attacked with cannon. After the unification of the crowns of Scotland, the castle underwent a number of alterations in the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. During World War II, the castle was used as an army barracks and fell into disrepair afterwards until bought by Sir Humphrey Wakefield, 2nd Baronet, who restored the castle to its present state. The castle has entertained a number of royal figures including Henry III, Edward I on his way to battle William Wallace, Anne of Denmark, Queen of Scotland, James I of England and VI of Scotland, Charles I and Edward VII before he was crowned. Today the castle is considered to be the most haunted in Britain and attracts a large number of tourists looking for ghosts. There are supposedly several ghosts, the ghost in the chamber, the white pantry ghost or the lady in white, voices of two men in the chapel, ghosts in the courtyard, the ghost of Lady Berkeley who wanders throughout, and the radiant boy who supposedly haunts the pink room. Surprisingly, none are associated with the Ubilet, a hole where prisoners were left forgotten to die. Chillingham Castle marks the end of section 30 of the Grand Tour of Northumberland. Just keep in mind that you can't park the car at Chillingham Castle for this hike because they don't open until 11 <laughs> and they shut the gate at 5, so your car will be stuck. So you have to park outside the grounds, but you can park along the verge um, on the road. So on this road here, you can park along the verge. And there's plenty of room for cars to get by. Let's just make sure you don't block any gates, really. How have I found this walk? Um, quite easy, to be honest. It's not too challenging. Um, lots of interest. The Bronze Age settlements, they were by far the highlight of the walk for me. Um, it was absolutely brilliant, really. I mean, obviously we split it into two sections because we don't can't do car to car at the moment. If you like the section, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Hit the subscribe button for the next adventure. Share with your friends on social media. And I'll catch you on the next one. Music to talk till it's secret life